You see, this is the as you know the calendar, the Oxford calendar, and I was um, matriculated in fifty one there. So and these these are the students that matriculated. And these were, were the, the scholars. And these were the commoners. And so, what's the difference between scholars and commoners? Uh, well, at that time, scholars were, well, had a, a scholarship. Yeah. A two a two year scholarship. Okay. And the commoners were uh, normal students. Uh, they had to pay for for their fees. We didn't have to, have to pay for the fees. So were you supported by the government? No, I was given a scholarship from St. Anthony's. Oh, wow. I... To all these are scholarships of, from, of St. Anthony's. I, I, can, I, shall, I shall first uh, uh, explain to you how it happened that I arrived in St. Anthony's. Well, in fact, I was... Um, I was uh, as a professor at the University of Louvain, Leuven, Leuven, and uh, uh, in economics, and he was um, uh, giving us uh, lessons on um, monetary theory and banking, and um, I. Uh, was particularly appreciated by him, I expect, and uh, he suggested that I go to Uppsala University in Finland. Yeah, in Finland, to work uh, with Professor L uh, Professor was it, uh, um, Professor. He was a very famous uh, monetary theorist. A, fi a Finnish professor. A Finnish professor. Uh, no, a uh, Swedish, a uh, Swedish professor. Um, what's it called? I really remember his name. And um, uh, for that, I applied for a scholarship of, of, of the Belgian government to go to Sweden and uh, for one year. And um, in fact, I was very well placed in the, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, I had a very good chance to get a scholarship. I was told by the people in, 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 on, in the Belgian, um, um, oh, my, my French is my, <laughs> very rusty now, my, um, by the Belgian government. But at the last minute, Although I was told that I would get a scholarship now on the world, my, 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 my uh, previous uh, uh, experience, uh, I was uh, outpassed by a medical doctor who applied to go to Sweden to study, uh, he was a surgeon, to study the uh, how to operate uh, les enfants bleus, blue children. No, 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 what is it? No blue clue. children were uh, uh, children who had a uh, heart problem. And in, in fact, as the, because of the heart problem, uh, he was uh, uh, blue in the face. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, uh, in Sweden, they had... Uh, for the first time, they operated this shin and successfully. And the Belgian government was very much interested that a Belgian doctor uh, was um, known how to operate this mm -hmm. And so I didn't get the fellowship. Okay, so, and during one year before, I studied Sweden because I was so sure that I would have the, the scholarship. And that was a scholarship of one year. And um, in summer 1951, uh, I was called by the rector of the university, of Belgian University, saying that he has met 
the warden of St. Anthony's, and that, uh, that, that warden was constituting his first students, yeah. and he was offering um, a scholarship to a Belgian student. So I then went to be interviewed at the Oxford, and I got the scholarship for three year, for two years. And were you going to do a particular degree as an economist? Yes, were you e do economist, yes, monetary economist. And that degree was at the economics faculty. Yes, but of Leuven. Of Leuven. Of Leuven. But what? So in in well, Oxford. I was for I was. Um, uh, proposed for a billet, yeah, or a D, or a B, a D, D, B fill, D fill, D fill, okay. D, D fill, mm -hmm. um, on on the monetary theory. And you see, that was the <laughs> the whole the whole the size of the college then. Incredible, very very small, very small. These were the, most of these people here are French, you know. Cotreau, Fontanet, Le Breton, Marin, and Raymond were French. I was a Belgian man, a sauvage. And, and do you think they uh, chose a French-speaking uh, Belgium? Not necessarily, but in the statutes he said um, admission to membership of the college shall be with regard to the wish of the donor. You know, you know who was the donor, Bess, huh? On the name Bess, yes. Yeah. The wish of the donor that men of French nationality should receive special consideration. So the first scholars were practically all French, mm -hmm. except me and also Keduri. Keduri was, uh, uh, I think, a Lebanese, something like that. Yeah, but all the rest were. were, were and, and, and so you were interviewed? I was interviewed by Joel. Uh, the uh, staff of the St. Anthony's was warned, of course, Bill Deakin uh, and uh, Joel, senior student, and uh, Bill Haley was the bursar. Now, the college just had been founded huh? and, and, uh, in, the, in the nunnery and in the garden, a uh, kind of um, prefabricated unit. Yeah. was in the garden, and the administration was in the garden, and Bill, uh, Hale, Bill Haley, an ex-Indian uh, 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 officer in the, in the, in the, in the army, um, was the person. So that was all, all stuff with three persons. And what about uh, the kitchen? Was there food? Uh, the, the kitchen, we had, I think it was a, a French... Cook, cook, uh, cook, but what is I'm sure of is that the um, the cook the the, the the quality of the cooking was highly reputed at that time. All the people of the other colleges were uh, keen to be invited uh, in Saint Anthony's because the French the, the cooking was particularly. Uh, exceptional. Well, we had to, to keep the French uh, students uh, happy, uh, I suppose. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and then uh, as uh, staff, I uh, had uh, Fred. Fred was the first uh, senior steward. There was also Charles, who was his assistant. And uh, in the uh, next to the door, there was what was, what, if I remember well, it was called a, a lodge. Mm -hmm. And there were two garden, uh, guardians were opening the door because we had to uh, build, to, to push the bell to get inside. And, and uh, where did you live? No, I, uh, some of, the, of these people, had a room in the nunnery, but I, I, there was no more place for me, and I was put in Winchester Road. Now, the, the, the Winchester Road was just the beginning, at the beginning of Winchester Road, there was a hole, a hole in the, 
in the wall, which allows us to go from Mises Road to, uh, to uh, Woodstock Road. And um, uh, two, two of us, myself and uh, the, uh, the Portuguese chap here, uh, Modesto, Modesto José de Figueiredo. He was an old, no, he was a former uh, 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 employee of the, uh, of the, uh, 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 there were also colonies there, not in the, from Angola, I think, from the British colony, the um, Portuguese colony, and he was sent by, by the government uh, to, to St. Denis, and he was, had a scholarship of the government. I see. Yeah. And uh, we were two of us, and I want to explain to you a bit further. Mm -hmm. uh, we were living on the first floor of Mr. Road. Um, after I came first, I had the, the room next to the bathroom, and uh, when Modesto arrived, he had a room uh, on the on the front on the front of the of the road. And um, <laughs> what is amusing is that um, uh, uh, when he arrived, I, I, I he was introduced to me, and uh, uh, the first thing we had to discuss is sharing the bathroom. Because we had two of us. And he said, oh, I don't mind, uh, because I go up very early and things like that, and I don't mind to go first. And of course, he didn't know how freezing it was in the bathroom. And, <laughs> and um, so he, uh, yeah, I said, oh, well, 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 I appreciate it. I, I like to, to, to get up later and uh, have a bathroom which had been warmed by you. <laughs> By the, by the world wars of that you yeah, have yeah. used. And um, so it went. And afterwards, after a certain time, he said, well, shouldn't we change? I said, no, 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 that's very good. But in fact, he, he was, afterwards he got to court, you know, he had to go back to Portugal because he was, he was uh, severely ill. Yeah. Uh, and on the basement, there were two, um, two persons, uh, well, the couple, in fact, uh, the man was an old um, veteran of the 1914 war, who was gay, had been gazed in 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 Ypres, you know, uh -huh. and his wife. Yeah, he was severely, well, severely. He was cursing all the time. Yeah, he had very bad uh, lungs, and um, they were the, the servants of that part of the college, at the Winchester Road. The other servants were living in the nunnery. So the servants actually lived in the same house as you did? Yes, on the basement. On the basement? Yeah. So I believe that's where now the bathrooms uh, are. Uh, of the, the, so the Winchester Road houses are still part of, uh, of St. So how many people are in Winchester Road now? I have no idea, but uh, there are. It's, uh, these are quite uh, big uh, houses. No, I think, I think the college bought the next house as well. Not, not only number 10, but... The oh, there, there is a whole row that is now owned by uh, St. Anthony's. Yeah, I see. But on Winchester Road, there is now also the Nissan Institute for Japanese Studies. Ah. So I think the whole road will probably look a little bit different uh, well, now. In fact, the same happened to Winston Woodstock Road. Uh, when I, I was uh, at Oxford, um, the college uh, uh, was restricted to the nunnery, nothing else. But afterwards, all the uh, houses in Woodstock Road were bought by the college. Well, it's now uh, very full with uh, buildings. Yeah. It, uh, have you been at all to Oxford to see? Have you been to St. Anthony's at all to see how it looks like nowadays? Uh, yeah, we have been there uh, when Bill Deakin, uh, there was a kind of um, uh, a meeting with, with, uh, with, all, with all the students doing the big Deakin. Uh, I see, yeah. I see. And I, I, I was there uh, then. But, uh, 
I didn't go afterwards. If you're still able to travel, you should have a look. Yeah, yes, it must have changed a lot then. So now, speaking of, of um, the nunnery, we, oh, there was a nunnery there in front of uh, Woodstock Road. You had the, the lodge. Then downstairs was the GCR. In the cellar, we had to go down to go to the GCR. Mm -hmm. There was also, I think the buttery was all, where we could have a drink in the evening. The, the chapel was still there. There was nothing was, there was no library there. Huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, the rooms were on the first floor. The warden and the James Joel had rooms on the first floor. Um, no, and then you had the garden, the free bath, the free bath um, uh, for the, um, the nursery. Yeah. Uh, there was a tennis course, two tennis courts on the right when you go to Winchester Road on the right. Then you had a hole in the wall and you get to. Uh, to to oh, all things then. Uh, and no, there was no all this this uh, further studies. Uh, uh, the European Centre, the, uh -huh. the, the nothing actually, just no, no. And was there so now uh, you know the students have the the graduate common room so the JCR the student yeah. representatives yeah. was there amongst your little group of students was there also a you know were you organized in something uh, to represent the student body to the college? Well, in fact, uh, we were in fact there were elections. I see. The JCR. And in fact, I was very badly placed because uh, I was also under pressure by from the, from the French people to vote always for the. In, in fact, Saint Anne's or the GCR was a perfect uh, example of a problem that uh, that comes up when you have a, a strong majority of one nationality. I see. Uh, the French, being so numerous, yeah. Uh, where and you know how the French are. <laughs> I'm not uh, saying anything there. <laughs> uh, there were, there were. They wanted to to, to rule the, the place. Yeah. And uh, uh, myself, I was under pressure uh, speaking French. I was under pressure by them, but not, I wasn't necessarily in favor of a French. Uh, I had to elect a Frenchman or or another one. And uh, that, 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 there was a, a bit of um, tension, as we say in French, of the difficulties, you know, between the, the French group and the others. And the other, so you mentioned a Portuguese, a Lebanese, or what were the other nationalities, as far as you can remember? Uh, well, I, the people were not um, uh, uh, stewards, um, stewards um, scholars, were green, that was an, an American, I think she was an American. Rosberg, that was an American. Alan Egal. Alan Egal was um, a man uh, who was then a prominent uh, member of um, trade unions in Israel. I see. And um, I think he became, he became minister afterwards. And uh, there were a lot of uh, visitors for him. Very often, when I go, I was going to the G, to the GCR, uh, I was seeing people discussing with Igal, uh, and um, uh, he didn't stay long, but he was very influential, uh, especially on uh, Israeli politics, mm -hmm. and I think he became minister. And then Peter Bunemann, Peter Bunemann is a German who fights. Uh, in um, uh, in Serbia or with uh, the the warden uh, opposites. I read about that. Uh, yeah. So 
and uh, Issa the Roman. And then you had you, nights, I can't remember what it was. Left of it was an Israeli, I think. And Modesto, and Scott was a, an, an Englishman. So you see, in the commoners, they were largely uh, non-scholars, non but all the scholars were on the other hand French people, uh, French nationality. Grossman was also um, an Englishman, and, and Michael Jordan was also an Englishman. Michael so Jordan. being so short after the war, were there was there still talk about what happened uh, in the war? You know, the, the German no. person or the Israeli? No, 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 no never discussions. What was uh, very, uh, very common then, that uh, people, the reputation of St. Anthony's was also, also already very high, especially in France. And... Uh, we had very often uh, MPs from France giving a speech at the Indonesia for very... For ju just time. a few, yeah. Uh, we had also visitors from, uh, you know, uh, MPs from, from England. Uh, but I remember at one time we had a, a French general. Uh, we have uh, outstanding people coming to, to speak to us. But being so small and being such a young place, do, yeah. did you feel it was kind of experimental as a, you know, St. Anthony's? Oh, yeah, yes, it was experimental. At that time, Oxford had practically no um, postgraduate college. Yeah. Uh, the only postgraduate college at the same time as uh, St. Anthony's was uh, Nuffield, Nuffield mm -hmm. College. They were the two, and both were very, very new, and we were hardly known inside of the university. When I was there, people were saying, which college have you come from? I said, what, what is that? <laughs> because especially, uh, as you see here, uh, since then it has the, the old uh, colleges, but also what I called um, uh, addition called Keeble, new foundations. Keeble yeah. was a new foundation, and uh, St. Peter's Hall, uh, St. Anthony's, St. Catherine's. Uh -huh. You know, these were not really integrated, fully integrated in the in the Oxford University. They were just additional places. And uh, very few people uh, knew the presence or presence in, in Oxford. We also had, well, maybe not a problem, but we were we had we had separate rules, disciplinary rules. Uh, at that time, uh, there was um, a curfew at ten o'clock, and at ten o'clock, uh, uh, Proctor. You know what's a proctor? Yes, I do. A proctor and two bulldogs <laughs> with bowler hats yeah. were uh, on the roads of Oxford. So there was special university police. The police uh, were delegating their, their, their problems to, to, to the, the, the bulldogs and the proctor. And if uh, there was a problem, uh, the proctor had, uh, were called to deal with the problem. And especially, the proctor were asking us if you were outside the college at 10 o'clock, uh, the traditional um, question, are you, sir, are you a member of this university? Yeah. And we replied, yes. And then, <laughs> the fine was five, five pounds at that time. <laughs> and we, we didn't have the, the, this problem. And in fact, uh, the lodge was closed. But there was a hole, a hole in the wall, yeah. and we all, all of us knew where the wall was, and we were getting in, in the pre college premises by, by, from, by this hole. 
So did you uh, so but did you feel that you were part of the university or was St. Anthony's really something we were, we were something probation. Yeah yeah. Uh, we were not really we were, we were not created. We were a member of the Bodleian Bodleian, we had two yeah. spheres and yeah. all this. Uh, we, had, we were we had also to wear the gown. Yeah. But if you wanted to uh, meet with uh, fellow economists, where would you would you meet them at the college or would that be at the, the faculty? No, we are completely alone. As research students, we had no contact. We were no going to courses, to lectures, nothing at all. I never went to a lecture at Oxford, but we were of course using extensively the library. Mm -hmm. Bodleian Library. Right. And and your did you have an academic supervisor? Yes. Well, <laughs> my first academic supervisor that was uh, designated to me was MacDougall. Now MacDougall was uh, a very prominent uh, economist, uh, professor, and uh, when I when I arrived, there was just a change in the government. The British government, the uh, conservateur, the, the Conservative Party won the election against the Labour, mm -hmm. and MacDougall was appointed as head of the economic service at the of the of the Prime Minister. So he couldn't take my my my. my I never. Uh, it was so soon after I arrived that I never I met him once at the meeting and he said immediately that he couldn't uh, take it. So then so, so the, the James George told me no problem, uh, you will get an, another university, uh, another supervisor. And the other university was Balog. I don't know if you heard about it. I have heard that name, but I can't place it. I but, think but Balog is uh, was a uh, an Hungarian, yeah. Uh, very unpleasant. <laughs> and um, in addition, very, very left wing. As my subject of my thesis was uh, how it was possible, in how was in uh, how what it made in Belgium that. In 1936-37, the Belgian government succeeded in restoring the economy, uh, and that was done by uh, by banking by, by, by banking forces. You know, uh, then the the banking the. the Investment by investment banking and deposit banking were not separated. Right. And um, see, Van Zeeland was the minister there, the finance, a very well known uh, minister of finance in Belgium, uh, separated two two functions. Um, but that didn't please at all to Balog. Balog was uh, in true philosophy of the labor. Ruling by, uh, by by injunction, by force, then things are ruling um, by rationing, by by really forcing forcing the economy in the labor, uh, and uh, so I didn't go well with him at all, and um, I spent a lot of time, uh, I I waste a lot of time then, and finally. Uh, I complained to, to Jane Jor and finally I was given as supervisor Roy Howard. Uh, Roy Howard, who uh, had written Keynes' uh, uh, biography and uh, who was a, a perfect gentleman, I no more problem. But I lost, I wasted a lot of time in my research. And did you eventually produce a paper? No. Uh, uh, finally, uh, I uh, I didn't present my, my 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 work. And is there a bit of regret that uh, no, you yes. did? Yes, yeah. yes, because 
I had a scholarship of two years, and um, I stand, I lost uh, certainly uh, one year. I see. Just being on my own, working on a, uh, I had a, a kind of um, working paper from the Louvain University on what, how to approach a problem. Uh, it was a liquidity, international liquidity money. And um, that's the all I had. I never had any encouragement, any, any support from Barok. And maybe the college was still so small and new that there may, I'm guessing that there was not much of a support system in place yes? no. yet? No. No, I was, I was, I was trying to, to do what I thought I should do in the library, yeah. but without no support by Balok. Balok became um, a lord afterwards. Um, he was really a figure of the Labour Party. Mm. Well, that is it. That is um, our regret, of course. And did, uh, did Bill Deacon, did he play a major role? Was he very visible? Oh, uh, yes, yes. He, yeah, well, he was. Uh, he was at that time working very much for um, ch for um, uh, Churchill. Churchill, yes. Yeah. Uh, he was a uh, main uh, contributor to Churchill's uh, work. But so but Churchill was to become prime minister again, I think. Yes. I think so th did that mean that Bill Deacon had to spend more time with Churchill yeah. or less? Well, he was spending a lot of time to write his, bi his, his, his biography. Uh, uh, yes, he was not. Uh, in certainly in my second year, uh, we didn't see him a lot. Okay. And if he was around, would he have uh, lunch and dinners with the students? Uh, oh, yes. Well, lunch was uh, in the uh, in the hall downstairs. Yeah, what is now the, it's now called the Gulbenkian reading room. It's yeah. a beautifully beautifully quiet space to uh, to read and, and to then research. And had two big tables and a high table. Uh huh. And uh, the people on the high table were uh, all, we all were were were, were there present, um, standing waiting for the high table to come and uh, when the high table was there the deacon would say sit down and um, uh, we would then uh, start eating yeah at the end of the meal we all practically every meal we had stilton and port uh, that was additional port or can canister was uh, given. It's interesting that uh, that people were actually sitting on an elevated high table because that is no longer the case yeah. at St. Anthony. So St. Anthony is now very egalitarian and people sit wherever they like to sit and, and so on. Yeah. So for students, they can sit I next to the fellows it. and staff yeah. can talk with everybody and so on. But um, even that, um, there are no female people in the, and uh, I remember uh, once I uh, I was visited by the Belgian a group of Belgians including uh, female people, and I wanted to to be invited to we could invite people to the um, right. to the hall, but only men, and I was told them that the girls couldn't. Like had to split, and the, only the men could come, but not the girls. And there was, there was awkward, already then a certain reaction. Yeah. And so after these two years, what happened? So you had to decide at some point, okay, I need to go uh, back. After two years, two years, I <coughs> first I, I applied to the. <coughs> I applied to the OECD, OECD or the OD, OECD, it was not OECD, and then it was OE. Oh, okay, yeah. And I, I was uh, uh, on the accepted, on, but on put on the waiting list. And uh, 
So that was Paris, huh? Yeah. And uh, well, I didn't like that to, to wait, to wait in London. And finally, I was recruited by Belgian Shell on the uh, idea that I would become sent Shell International afterwards. And I spent uh, uh, two years working in Belgium, in Belgian Shell. Then when I went to London, uh, to go to international, international uh, shell, mm -hmm. then to Nigeria, then I came back to Belgium, and then I went to Paris, <laughs> uh, to Paris Chien Francaise, and then finally back again to Belgium. <laughs> And throughout, and, and after your departure, did you uh, manage to stay in touch with uh, some of the uh, scholars and uh, yes, commoners? Uh, Mike, Michael Jordan, yes. Mike, Michael Jordan was then at the uh, NATO. Uh -huh. And uh, I met him once or twice here in, in Brussels. Uh, that's the only one I, I saw. Yeah, I, I didn't... Ah, yes, Peter Bunemann, as you... Uh, the, the German? German chap. Uh, in fact, I went, <laughs> it's quite amusing, uh, I, I asked his address, and um, I went un unannounced to his place, and it was just his marriage that day. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and he invited me to his marriage. And um, uh, so I saw him then. But um, they're not the others. And did you? And do you? So, working for an international company, uh, um, I think that you know monetary theories and yeah. so on are no, I, le I, less are less all, relevant. All monetary theory was abandoned. <laughs> yeah. But did you keep an interest in in that topic at all? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I think. Uh, well, because monetary theory wasn't then very, very common, but now the monetary theory is essential to it in the, in the economic paradigm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Going back uh, to to the college itself, who were the fellows? Do you remember that? Oh uh, yes, uh, they're all here. Bill Haley, the bursar. Bill Deakin, of course. Joel, James Joel, he was especially um, uh, on the German German uh, history. Alban, uh, Alban is kind of nice. Yeah, so Alban was a physicist, right? A nuclear fi right. nuclear physicist. Yeah. So that is, to me, very strange that there were actually physicists. At St. Anthony's, because it now, you know. Well, he was in fact the supervisor of um, Pierre, Pierre Marin. Pierre Marin was a physicist. So let's speak, speak about Alban. Okay. Alban was a very charming person. He was married to a Rothschild. His wife was a Rothschild. And uh, uh, he had a, a farm, he was the owner of a farm around Oxford. Now, I was there when the Elizabeth II was coronated, uh, the coronation of, of Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Bill Deakin was very friendly with um, the uh, rector of a, a university in Denmark. And he was offered by that uh, rector a, a Knox. <laughs> Because the, the tradition is at the coronation to uh, to roast a, a, a full ox. As in a Danish tradition? Hmm? A Danish tradition? Or is that a Danish tradition or a UK tradition? No, no I think it's an English tradition. Okay. Uh, you, there were, uh, a, he was a, 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 of the an ox and uh, the uh, cooking of the hall of the that ox was made in one of the Alban farm. 
And uh, there was a big ceremony, really, because um, that ox, they had to build completely uh, a kind of furnace. You know, it was a, a, a thing or two. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To, to, for, and uh, the, uh, it was very difficult to have the precise bun, good cooking at the moment of the meeting. See? It was very difficult to adapt to, to, to two problems. And uh, we had a wonderful uh, ceremony, the uh, coronation ox. Um, and uh, Alban was a physicist, and uh, Pierre Marin was, uh, I, 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 I was very friendly with him. He, he was a communist, a very strongly communist, not uh, uh, by theory, but by heart. You know, he was really. One but, of so, his, so unlike your first supervisor, he was a bit uh, <laughs> friendlier. The, and um, uh, he uh, was working in the Clarendon Laboratory, I think. Uh -huh. For um, this and building a machine, no, he was first. He had first to do by theory on on nuclear energy, and um, then he was had to build the machine to prove the practical uh, parts of his thesis. And many times he had told me that uh, I should have come to see him at the laboratory and things like that. And one, uh, one day I went to Carmen and uh, I, 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 went to, 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 I went to see his, um, his machine. And when I arrived, he was there sewing and, and smoldering and uh, really building the machine physically. And I was very surprised. I thought, you know, it was really high, bro. <laughs> And um, I said, I, you can't ask somebody else to, to do that. Oh, yes, he said, I have to do, uh, can I have you use a, a, a somebody, but um, I have to explain to him what I do, and it's very difficult because uh, I, I shall like to change my, 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 my requisitions, things like that. So uh, I prefer to do it myself. And I realized then that not to be, a physicist is not only to be a physicist in theory, but also to be practical. You have to be able to do all these things. And uh, he then, uh, I don't know what happened to him, but another, another chap, um, Sauvage, Gilbert Sauvage. Gilbert Sauvage, I think is him, uh, um, died on a plane died in, in South America uh, very, very rapidly after he left the university. Um, no, no, so far died no, in a plane coming to Brussels in a plane, but another one died uh, in, uh, in South America. I can't remember which one was. Rosberg uh, was an American. No, in the Anderson, Anderson, Martin Anderson was a very brilliant chap, but he also died very soon because he was very diabetic. He was very ill. Lots of sleep. So, Bowen was um, writing books. I don't know if he became a, a, a writer. I don't know. And Bowen and Roberts went into the um, foreign, office, foreign office. I, I when I, I, once I met him afterwards uh, in London. Because afterwards, when I was in London mm -hmm. for Shell. I went to see him in the foreign office. Yeah. And tell me, uh, the, the, the bursar, what was the role of the bursar? So nowadays, uh, I see the bursar as the chief operating officer slash 
chief financial officer. Yes. Was that kind of the he same? Was, he was a chief. Uh, I don't think he had the, uh, uh, the academic uh, reference to do, to do that, but he was the chief investor of the, of the college. He was really running to the defense of the college. So he was managing the, the, the gift from Anthony Best, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what, if, was there already any fundraising happening uh, beyond that big gift from Anthony Best? Do you know if the college was looking for funds elsewhere? No. The only thing I know is that uh, before I arrived, uh, in St. Denis, you know, some of the students, the scholars here, were mat matriculated in 1950. And in 1950, Best came to the college. And, uh, but I wasn't there. I believe he uh, died in uh, just before you arrived. I, uh, I read that it, that was in July 51. That's he died, yes, he died or I can't remember. I think so, yeah. yeah. But I, I know that he, he, in 1950 he, he visited the college. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, uh, his daughter, uh, what's her name? Mona. Mona. Mona Bess was very often in the college. Yeah. Well, she worked for the college, didn't she? Yes, what she, I don't know in which capacity, but uh, she was very often there. If I remember correctly, she was supporting the bursar, but I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely that, sure. Yeah. If there is a, uh, one thing you want to say to current students of St. Anthony's, what would that be? <laughs> that the life that I experienced in St. Anthony's is certainly so different from that life now. And sometimes I go to to the to the, to the uh, Belgian Oxford uh, uh, St Anthony's uh, meetings, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, when I ask people uh, which years I matriculated and things like that, it's also so different, you know. When I I say that I spe I was matriculated in 1951, I, I opened my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I think that um, when, my, when I was in, in St. Anthony's, St. Anthony's and Nuffield were both at that time rather experimental, just making their place. And uh, the rivalry between Nuffield and St. Anthony's was very, very high. Academically or also otherwise? Hmm? Academically or otherwise? I, I, no, uh, uh, for their reputation. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, uh, it means academic here, it's academically. And, um, but still then, from then, I think St. Anthony's overcame completely Nuffield. I hardly hear anything about Nuffield College now. Whilst I very often uh, hear about St. Anthony's. Uh, and in and, and what sense do you hear about St. Anthony's? Is that because of, of our communications or because there is someone in the news? No, so people are in the news, mm. yes, along with that. Uh, people referring to St. Anthony's in, mm. in, uh, in the press. Uh, I, I hardly hear of uh, nothing. Well, Nuffield is, of course, a, it's much, it, it, it remained very small. So mm -hmm. it only, uh, it has, I believe, only 20 or 25 new students every year. And it's uh, very academic. Uh, and I think many of our alumni go into politics or here in Brussels mm -hmm. to the EU. So I'm guessing that that is one of the reasons why our mm -hmm. uh, former students appear more in the in the news and also because we are just much bigger <laughs> so one thing uh, that I, I imagine is also different is that uh, sports you know being member of sports societies and sport, 
No, so football and rowing are quite prominent, uh, yeah. and other sports as well are quite prominent uh, with uh, for it students. In, in existence in my, uh, we had of course a tennis court, and I was riding in meadows somewhere. Yeah, yeah, there, uh, yeah, Oxford yeah. Meadow. Yeah, still but, there. But uh, that was uh, completely a uh, uh, university uh, place. How? Saint Anthony's has managed to to uh, use the funds of best so nicely. So fundraising became very much part of what the wardens uh, are doing, um, and all the centres at Saint Anthony's they're very active in uh, in their fundraising. Um, but the best, the best. Uh, gift was once or as no, I, I think it was, really... I am I think it from himself it was once but his daughters they have supported uh, the college yeah. but now nowadays you know uh, fundraising is part of uh, daily life and what uh, what we do and it is uh, one of the major things that uh, Roger the warden uh, does uh, and it is for buildings, but also to support students. Mm. But there's no more um, scholars. Well, so we uh, we have a number of scholarships that are in place, um, but these uh, are in place through fundraising. Uh, and, and essentially, you were uh, you know you were supported by a scholarship that was also part of a gift. So, right. so that was part of the, of the best. Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, we fundraise now for a variety of uh, scholarships, and you know, we want to have the best uh, students that we can get. Um, but not all students have the means to come, and uh, we try to support uh, them as much as we can. But the only way of doing that is uh, through scholarship fundraising. How many people are now? The students are in... About 500. That's big. <laughs> it's, 